couple of months ago, I reached out to Limited Run's PR and asked if I could attend the Limited Run retail store's grand opening. They said yes, so I packed a camera, a tripod, my switch, and a change of clothes. After the three hour drive, I arrived at what may be the coolest video game store I've ever been to in my life. There are tons of limited run games, merchandise, memorabilia, and the most incredible pre-owned game library I've ever seen in one place. I even had the chance to interview Douglas Boggart, which unfortunately got cut short in the midst of the final answer, but we still had a great chat. I also reunited with IGN's former senior editor, Jared Petty, and he took my picture with a Game Boy camera, which was pretty surreal. I did make some purchases, but we'll go through those at the end of the video. I met some incredible people along this journey, and it was a great learning opportunity for videos like this in the future. I know now what I need for next time, and there will be a next time, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I also make retrospectives, reviews, and other gaming-related videos that you may want to check out. Anyway, let's dive in. Hello everyone, I am on my way to the Limited Run uh, Retail Store Grand Opening. Uh, I reached out to them a couple of months ago, I was like, hey, I write for lordsofgaming.net and I wanted to know if it would be okay to come out and interview y'all around your grand opening and they said, yeah, that'd be awesome. We're doing a media day and we're doing a grand opening, so if you want to come out, cool. Well, uh, what I imagine happened is that they got pretty busy preparing for PAX and preparing for this great opening that uh, when, you know, we weren't messaging constantly, uh, things kind of slipped through the cracks and I eventually reached out and was like, hey, is that still okay to do? And they were like, yeah, come out and if you want to stop by the Friday before, uh, we can do more intimate interviews. And I was like, oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, sign me up. Uh, what time works for you? And then I never heard back. But today on their social media, they said that today on Friday, the Saturday before the opening, they're going to be open from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. doing trade-ins for, I guess, pre-owned video games and stuff. So I'm just going to drive out there and shoot my shot and see what happens. Uh, hopefully this works out. If not, I'll have to just take the bath on the hotel room and, yeah, just have to deal with that. But... Um, yeah, I live about three hours away. It's a little after, I think, 2 p.m. So, yeah, I should be there by 5. That gives me about three hours to get in and interview these guys. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, wish me luck. Bye. Here I am. 
I'm gonna go out there and remind people that that is how David, David, and Ben. Are bad. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah, so you have to ask uh, yeah, those folks over there. Pick list? Okay, there's more of them. I brought it here. a sealed new PS5. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Original X1. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn the battery powered printer on, and plug it in to the link cable as if we were Pokemon training, 
going to go up here to where it says print in Japanese. And then when I hit this button, in theory, there we go, it's sending the signal. That's too cool. And instant pericota. Oh, well, kind of instant. <laughs> yeah, it's like a dot matrix. It's a thermal. It's, not easy it's thermal. Mm -hmm. So don't hold a lighter underneath. Yeah. Right. It uses thermal paper with a adhesive backing, so you could use them as stickers. That was the idea. Oh. Yeah, these, this Might have to put it on my uh, OLED dock. I'm going to take a picture of you in here. Yeah. Tear it off. Give people a chance to access the site, make an order, and shop for it. They're going to the library store. Oh yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Jeremy Parrish, my boss, came up with the idea of bringing this thing, and so we could use it uh, as a sort of a mobile photo booth since it's all battery powered. <laughs> it's so cool. Is there a messenger though? Because that's not official. Here's your sticker. Thank you so much, Jared. No problem. Is there a messenger traded in? Hello, Douglas, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Do you prefer Doug? Uh, Douglas is fine. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Yeah. No, thank you for coming out. Yeah, the turnout is huge. You have to be over the moon today. Yes. Uh, every time we do one of these events, I never know what to expect, and this stuff like just blew everything away. So. Yeah, it's super cool, and you know, just looking around, I'm seeing tons of Vita games and uh, so many games I haven't thought of in such a long time and so many different limited run games that, you know, you, limited almost feels like uh, just like a branding thing at this point. Oh, yeah, we, uh, we've always tried to, anytime we've done a limited run in the past, we always reserve copies for replacements uh, as well as damages and uh, over time we've just kind of accumulated a lot of stock that we've never been able to sell. Uh, not to mention a lot of new stuff and all the other stuff we have. My co-founder is always been a sealed game collector. Uh, and he just likes purchasing stuff to watch the values go up and just it's kind of a fun thing for him. So we, you know, as a company, bought a lot of his collection and we're selling it to people. Um, and cool. then, yeah, like I said, we, we hold on to a lot of our own games. And then when we switched to open pre-order, you know, it was easier to reserve a percentage for the store. So we kind of had an idea in our head that this would be a thing one day. Yeah. Um, but this really only came together, like, as soon as the pandemic started. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. cool. So that kind of leads me to my first question, you know. When I heard you were opening a retail location, I thought, of course they are, because that feels like a natural extension of the mindset that would lead you to releasing physical versions of digital games. So I want to kick it to you by asking, what does opening the store mean to you? Uh, it means a lot. Uh, like you said, we do physical games, and I think uh, the retail experience is definitely something a lot of people in my generation and older miss. Um, you don't really have retail game stores in a lot of areas anymore. I know like when we visit San Francisco, for example, we have to travel outside the city to go to the game store. There's just not many here. And growing up around this area in the Raleigh and Cary area, the only store we had back in the day were like Play and Trades and we had a uh, high right video games, which, you know, they kind of were right on, was on the wall for them because uh, they were kind of shady. But we, uh, we just don't have a whole lot. Like the best game store here is in Greensboro which is about an hour and a half away called Lost Art. So we kind of thought, why don't we bring that back? And ever since we started the company, Josh had always told me, like, you know, Flemming and Runnerberg goes out of business. Like, I think the next thing I'll do is open a game store. And we were all just kind of sitting around thinking, you know, right before the pandemic, like, why don't we just do that while we can and do it well? Because obviously if the company goes out of business, whatever game store you're is not going to be this. Like, this looks amazing. So it also gives us a chance to hold events like this to really, like, show customer appreciation. It also lets us invite guests. Uh, we have a room that will eventually be good for panels. Uh, cool. So we're going to have, like, game launches here in the future and just do more stuff like this and really bring back that feeling that we all had when we were younger, like, buying a game in a store that's just, like, themed around games. Yeah. 
cool. It's so cool that you even mention uh, plan trade because I feel like that's like a that's a deep cut in the retail store world. I had a plan trade on the Outer Banks where I grew up. Yeah, and, lots of yeah, yeah, great place, great conversations in those plan trades. Yeah. So. Um, my next question is, uh, you know, Limited Run has worked with developers large and small, and I imagine each comes with their own set of challenges. When you get in contact with a studio like LucasArts, how do those conversations differ from the smaller studios? Um, with the larger companies, it's definitely a matter of building trust um, and kind of a lot of references, like these are people we've worked with in the past. Uh, there's a lot more forecasting that goes into those. We kind of have to like basically create a big sale. Uh, almost to kind of show them an example of like this is what we think the potential could be. Um, and we also have to just, you know, be very careful about with the IPs, like show them that, you know, anything we do, we're going to be very careful on the approval process. Uh, we're obviously going to show a lot of care uh, in terms of being fans of the IPs. Um, and it's just a lot more paperwork, a lot more approvals. It's definitely a lot slower process overall, but you are dealing with a larger company, uh, so it just kind of comes with the territory. But overall, it's, you know, the actual process is very similar to what we do with the it's just extended because of all the approvals. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. That's fascinating. Um, so, out of all the limited run games made physical either for the first time or once again, what's the one game you held for the first time and thought, I can't believe we did this? Yeah. This is tricky. I was walking the line earlier and people uh, would ask that question that's like picking your favorite kid. But uh, I feel like the biggest deal for me uh, and probably you know my co-founder as well is dealing with the Star Wars IP was a huge thing for us because you know, even as early, like I've known my co-founder Josh since we were in sixth grade in 2000. Uh, so cool. And I remember when Revenge of the Sith was coming out, we would act out Star Wars scenes in Toys R Us. Uh, so we're, we've been huge Star Wars fans since we've known each other and before. So the fact that we were able to do anything with that license means a huge deal to us. Uh, it's just kind of mind-blowing to think that we came from doing, you know, our own small indie games to now we're doing Star Wars stuff. Yeah, I saw like the NES, um, carts oh, for yeah. like Those Empire and stuff like that. It was yeah. so cool. Josh came up with the blister pack idea because we plugged the toys. Yeah. yeah. It's so cool. That, uh, that's pl I got plenty of B-roll for that. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, it is really amazing. Um, with the growing popularity of subscription services and cloud gaming, when you look at the resurgence in the vinyl record market, does that inspire hope that people will still desire physical media in the future? Yeah, I, I think... Uh, I would say Inspired is definitely a past tense for us because clearly we've shown that there is a model for this. There's like 20 other companies doing something similar to us now, and there's definitely demand. Um, Vinyl was a very good example of the writing on the wall that we knew that this could probably be a thing. Um, when we launched this, digital was already starting to be kind of become the forefront. A lot of publishers and developers were scared of retail because the massive cuts they were having to get the game, the sales they were having to do, they just weren't making money anymore, and it wasn't worth it to develop. And at that point, it was just cheaper to do digital. So once we, you know, examined the vinyl market, uh, we saw that movie collecting was still a huge deal. We were like, you know, there's definitely going to be a demand for games because we want them. There's got to be people like us. And we were right. There was tons of people. And it, it's only grown from here. Our customer base just keeps expanding. Like I said, there's more companies doing what we do. It's definitely proven to be very similar to vinyl. And I think physical games will be around for a really long time, but it, it definitely will still always be an uphill battle. I don't think digital is the way... I don't think digital will be something that will happen soon rather than later because, unfortunately, in America, the infrastructure for Internet is just not all there. Uh, we just got Google Fiber in the area I live in, which I have. It's amazing. But a lot of places and a lot of customers we talk to, they still have, like, tiered Internet. Uh, they have data caps. They have mobile speeds. It's just, it's just not... It's not feasible to just yet. I mean, you look at Stadia, and Stadia, like, launched really big but it kind of it, it fizzled yeah it's just the infrastructure is not there so i think physical is going to be around for a long time and i think people like nintendo will probably continue doing physical for as long as they can since you know that's kind of their bread and butter yeah i mean really the only physical games i feel like i've still bought have been nintendo games uh oh, there you go yeah and so yeah i recently i stopped 
subscribing to like Game Pass and a lot of these other services just because I'm seeing everything that's going on with Netflix and Paramount Plus and Peacock and how everything is getting split up and I start to get concerned about encouraging the subscription model and starting to move back to physical and almost on PS5 and Xbox as well. Yeah, I totally feel that. I uh, was trying to balance my account, my uh, bank account recently and the absurdity of how many uh, subscription services I'm subscribed to is just insane. And, like, for example, during the pandemic, I forgot I had a two-year, I had been paying for two years straight for Crunchyroll. And I just like, oh my god, if this whole time I've had access to like a lot of anime that I wanted to watch in the pandemic, I just forgot. Yeah. Like, it just it never occurred to me that I was already paying for it. And then the same thing's happening with like Paramount Plus and Hulu. It's like, I, some, I, you know, I only use them when there's like a new show and then like I forget. And everything's split and it's just kind of, I hate that. And like Game Pass, I'm, I'm paying for that, but honestly, I mostly just play games I already own, so it's like I'm not really utilizing the features I should be in. I think a lot of people, like you said, are starting to realize that and they're becoming a little jaded on the whole thing. Yeah, I'm buying 4K Blu-rays and physical Same. games again. And, and it's heartbreaking when you see places like Best Buy shrink the movie department. Yes. Because I'm still looking for movies. Yeah, yeah. Blu-ray.com. There you go. Yeah, you Easy can name. keep tabs on everything, <laughs> what's going on, yeah. All right, so um, let's see. I think it's incredibly cool that Limited Run makes physical versions of games for retro consoles in 2022. Is there a console that you would love to make a physical, or that you would love to make physical games for that you haven't had a chance to yet? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. There's a. Uh what I would personally like. I mean, we've always talked about like it'd be cool to bring back some Dreamcast stuff, but we'd only ever do it if it was officially licensed by Sega. Yeah. Um, I know Game Gear, I, I, during the pandemic, I was trying to find weird things to collect to make uh, keep myself sane. Game Gear was one I started trying to collect for, but like, nobody kept the boxes for those. Yeah. And if they did, they're in terrible condition. Uh, it'd be cool to be able to redo stuff like that so that people can collect a full set again. Um, and then, you know, like Neo Geo, Neo Geo Pocket, those are things too that would have been cool because those are so expensive. Douglas got cut short and because the camera at 10 minutes times out and I didn't realize and so sorry I just hit a huge speed bump um, I didn't realize that at the time but I had asked the meat of everything that I wanted to ask at the time and it got cut short kind of in the last question that I really needed an answer for or wanted an answer for but I had a great time got an awesome haul of games uh, that I, I'm super excited about and it was a really awesome opportunity. 
I can't believe I got to meet Jared Petty again and get to interact with him more. And he took a picture of me on a Google, or sorry, no, a uh, Game Boy camera and printed it with a Game Boy printer. That was super cool. Um, man, I'm still just kind of reeling from it all. It was a really special event, and I'm glad I was able to attend it and uh, meet so many sweet people. I hope that a lot of the people I met in the line uh, find me, because they we all kind of followed each other on uh, Twitter or Instagram or something, or my YouTube channel, and so, man, it, I really just, man, it was such a cool time. I'm really excited that all that worked out, and uh, yeah, I'm on my way home now. I've got like an hour and 45 minutes left, so I'm going to get home. I've got to record me, myself, and I. Uh, then tomorrow I'm going to edit video, and yeah, I'm excited. So uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. Uh, hopefully I get to do more stuff like that as things come available. And uh, yeah, take care. Hello everyone. So I made it home and I figured really quick I would run through the haul of everything that I bought while I was there because I couldn't go to limited run and leave empty handed. So first off, I bought this shirt clearly. Um, I figured if I go all that way, I may as well get a shirt, right? Um, and then, so let's see, here's the, uh, like the badge that I got. I'm trying to make sure you can see it. That like basically let me into everything. So that was cool. I'm gonna hold on to that as like a little like a uh, memento of the first thing I've done like this for lordsofgaming.net and the YouTube channel. So hold on to that. Uh, another cool thing that happened, uh, you saw in the video where uh, Jared Petty, uh, former senior editor at IGN, uh, Pockets Full of Soup podcast host. He also did Hot Blip and a Jump. Uh, he took my picture with the Game Boy camera. I don't know if it'll pop in there, but uh, yeah, he printed it out. Or yeah, he took it with the Game Boy camera and printed it out on the Game Boy printer. Uh, it also doubles as a sticker, apparently, but I'm just gonna leave it like this and hold on to it as well as like a little memento as something that was uh, pretty cool that like, like I had seen or I listened to him on so many podcasts and read his work I don't know how many times and it's just like kind of trippy to have this uh just really cool memory uh then another like kind of like cool thing that they had that they were giving away to people that made purchases are these limited run they're like they feel like top baseball cards essentially um but got those with the purchases that I made. Uh, those are pretty cool. There's the backs if you're interested in that. But set those off to the side and then we'll dive into what I picked up. So in terms of limited run games, uh, I didn't get too much. They had so many things, but um, I kind of gravitated towards their pre-owned section a little bit, but I did want to get some stuff that uh, was a limited run, like, a proprietary thing. So first I picked up Return of the Ober Din. Uh, I remember when the demo came out for this uh, and I played through that and was like, oh wow, this is really cool. And then it came out and I never, like it re finally released and I never checked it out. And uh, just to have a copy of that is pretty cool. So I picked that up. And if you've never checked out Return of the Ober Din, if you're into like uh, detective mystery and like a, uh, I think it's like, it's all in like that black and white pixel art. And yeah, I'm looking forward to finally checking that out and maybe doing a video on it in the future. Um, and then a game that I've played on, I don't know how many consoles and never beat it, uh, but I have it digitally everywhere and I wanted a physical copy. Uh, Transistor by uh, Supergiant Games uh, picked that up and it feels hefty it feels like there's something in there uh, not sure I want to open it quite yet but got both of them at the retail price they were I think both yeah both were $34.99 so that was cool to like walk into a place and buy these you know um, can't complain much there and like on the spines they say limited run which is pretty cool 
All right, so in terms of pre-owned games, I'm gonna like go through the stack because I kind of went a little overboard. Uh, first up, I got a complete inbox copy of Forza Motorsport for the original Xbox for $6.99. Are you kidding me? Um, and it's in like awesome condition. Uh, this was really cool. I, I didn't even check to see if it was backwards compatible, but I would imagine it is. Um, so hopefully I get to pop this in my Series X and check it out because I've been playing a lot of Gran Turismo 7 and I never thought I was a, like a racing, like car driving sim fan. So uh, I, I had this on the original Xbox though. So it'll be cool to go back and revisit it and see how far we've come. Especially, like, I played a lot of Forza Horizon uh, with my buddy Ranchy. He's a YouTuber as well, so if check him out. He does really cool videos. This game I talked about in a recent episode of Me, Myself, and I, and I think I, I oddly, like, tweeted about it. And uh, it was a game that captivated me and my friends uh, when we were maybe in, like, middle school or high school, but it's Shadowrun for the Xbox 360. Uh, got it for $5.99. It was a steal, uh, feels compl complete in box. You know, I can't tell if that, yeah, there's a manual in there. So it's got the manual, which is pretty cool. Um, if you haven't checked out this game, find a way to play it, or maybe I can pop it in and just like play bots now, maybe? Or maybe it'll just be this little uh, gem that I have to look back at and be like, wow, dude, shadow run. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna get into the PS2 games. Uh, cause I bought quite a bit of PS2 games, even though I don't have a PlayStation 2 to play them. I just wanted them. So I got, uh, God of War 2, the two disc, uh, what is it? The two disc set complete in box. Feels like there's a manual in there. It's pretty heavy, but it could just be both discs. Um, this is, I, I, I have it in the, what the God of War, uh, saga for PS3, but uh, I love this game, so I figure having a copy of it, especially for $11.99, that's kind of a no-brainer. So, I picked that up. Then, anybody that knows me knows I'm a huge Ratchet & Clank fan, and one of the blind spots has always been Ratchet Deadlocked. So I got this uh, black label uh, PS2 game for $14.99, like, I can't believe that. Um, and, you know, I don't have a way to play this because I don't have a PS2. Maybe I'll buy a PS2, but I think I can download Ratchet Deadlocked somewhere and just leave this one packaged up because uh, it's more of just like a thing for me to have. And then also in the Ratchet and Clank space, I got a copy of Up Your Arsenal for, uh, what, $16.99? <laughs> It was seriously a steal. Uh, there was no way I was leaving without it, but these were the only two Ratchet and Clank games that they had left when I was there. Otherwise, if they had had the whole run, I would have bought every single one of them. Um, to be fair, I didn't check to see if they had PSP games, so I don't know if Size Matters was there. Um, otherwise, I would have bought it. Um, but yeah, I remember when this game came out and uh, I got it for either like a birthday or Christmas or something like that. And uh, I love Up Your Arsenal. It's a great game. But we have two more in the PS2 space. I got a copy of Jack and Daxter, the Precursor Legacy for, it's a greatest hits, which, you know, some people are kind of like, eh, but um, I don't care. I wanted a copy and uh, it was $12.99. So there was no way I was leaving without it. And uh, it's pretty trippy to see it. If they had had Jack 2 and Jack 3, I probably would have got those as well. But uh, kind of bought this just as like a, I love the game. Uh, I, I could play it on my PS3 and I, I think they're available on PS4. So by default, you could also play them on PS5, but wanted to uh, have a copy for myself on PS2. And then, the piece de la resistance. Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoon is on, for, on PS2. It's the greatest hits version, but I can tell that the manual is in there. Uh, and it was $14.99, so you can't really go wrong there. And it was the only Sly Cooper game that I saw in the store. 
So I'm incredibly stoked to own this. Um, yeah, this this one's trippy. I'm, I'm really excited to have this one. Uh, and you know, they were the Fridays, cause today's Saturday. So Friday they were having people come in and trade in things. So I don't know if somebody traded this in the day before and that's where they got this whole library of games. Uh, cause they had the best collection of pre-owned games I've ever seen in a store. Um, never would have thought I would have walked out with this grip of games for, uh, between what I got, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine games, a t-shirt, um, oh, I almost forgot about this, but including this for $200 and that's with tax. So it was a little birthday treat to me. My birthday was the 28th and today's the 30th. So yeah, this, this was a cash wrap or like point of sale uh, impulse buy, but it's a precursor egg from Jack and Daxter, the precursor legacy. Uh, this was sitting on their cash wrap, just like chilling. And then I was like, oh man, that's cool. But of course that's like a one-off thing. They don't have a bunch of those. And then they had a whole thing of them just sitting there. Um, and you can't open it. So that's just a design. There's no secret thing hidden inside, but this is so cool. Like this is gonna get displayed somewhere. Um, Man, what a awesome trip. Still can't believe it. Uh, I'm gonna ride this high for a little while. This is cool. And on this whole game haul is pretty incredible. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching this video. Uh, head over to lordsofgaming.net, check out my writing, uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, head over to Twitter and follow me there, Hitbox Detective. Uh, it's hitbox.detective on Instagram and TikTok if you want to go there as well. Um, yeah, hopefully I get to do more stuff like this in the future. Uh, this was like a couple months in the making. And basically when opportunities like this come up, I'm going to try to jump on them. But, you know, I still have a day job. So it has to fall within either a weekend or I have to request time off. So, yeah, this is... Uh, this was cool and I had a great time and made some friends, made some connections and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next one. But uh, until next time, take care, lead with love and stay hydrated. Peace.